Have you ever been told you lack common sense? Or have you ever been exhorted to use more common sense? Well, common sense can be a great thing. It's a blessing that helps us to sort through different situations and to make just the right decision that makes just the most sense at any given point. However, the readings today remind us as Christians that we are called to live at a level that goes beyond common sense. It's not against it. It's not unnatural, but the readings today remind us that we are called to live at the supernatural level, the spiritual level. And so we hear St. Paul tell the Romans today, do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. You see, For us as Christians, it's not just about getting in touch with our own mind, our own sensibilities, but we're called to get to know the very mind of God who calls us his children, who calls us friend. He wants to share with us his mind and his will so that we may know what is truly good and pleasing and perfect, and we can be a part of that and even a part of making that manifest here on earth. We have this powerful, beautiful psalm today, Psalm 63, in which we pray, My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirst like the earth parched, lifeless, and without water. We are made, our souls thirst for God. It wants more than just common sense. It wants more than just the things of this world and the sensibility that our sensibilities can bring us. As beautiful as this world is, it all points us to something beyond. You look up at the sky and you see the innumerable stars. You look at the beautiful creation. And as much as you love it and want to experience it more, it draws you to something beyond. There's a majesty about it that draws you to our creator. And so there can be this tension at times between what our common sense tells us and what uh, our spiritual sensibilities tell us, particularly as we allow the Lord to start transforming and renewing our mind, as St. Paul says. Perfect example of this today in the gospel. Jesus is telling them the supernatural plan that that the Father has for him, that he has to go to Jerusalem to suffer, to be killed, And on the third day be raised and Peter's common sensibilities kick into gear. And he says, no, Jesus, God forbid this. This does not seem good. Our common sense, we have to remember, is formed in a broken world. Our common sense many times tells us do what is most comfortable, do what is most convenient. We uh, have that animalistic instinct, the survival of the fittest. Do what we need to do to preserve ourselves. And so these kind of instincts are triggered when Peter hears Jesus talking about having to suffer and be killed. And Jesus responds very strongly. He says, get behind me, Satan. You're an obstacle to me. And then he says, you are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. Right there, Jesus points at this tension between our common sense and the supernatural life that God has intended for us to be part of him redeeming and recorrecting the minds and the sensibilities of people on earth. So Jesus says, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Even these words play with our mind because it seems totally against our sensibilities. The very words deny himself. It seems like we're supposed to preserve ourselves, but Jesus is saying to deny ourselves. And so we're opened up into this new way of thinking when God starts to transform our mind. What he calls us to do is not always going to be the most comfortable. It's not always going to be the most convenient. Sometimes what he will call us to do will involve great suffering. But so that our minds, the minds of others, and the world itself can experience this renewal. And the realities of heaven and earth can be more 
on par with one another. And the things that our soul thirsts for the most, God himself may become more and more accessible. Just recently uh, in the news, an actor, Chadwick Boseman, died of a kind of hidden four-year battle he had with colon cancer. He was just 43 years old. And my heart really went out to him as I started in his family, as I started seeing this news. And if, if you don't know the name Chadwick Boseman, perhaps you've heard of the movie Black Panther. That kind of catapulted him into fame by playing that uh, superhero. It's kind of one of the really the first movies featuring a, a black superhero and uh, made a big impact on uh, the United States and in the, really the whole world to, to see a superhero featured like that. And I saw some different things in social media, encouraged people you know, to kind of watch one of his movies in his honor. And, and I actually caught the movie 42 that he starred in. And this movie, uh, I started watching on TV and I said, man, I wanna watch every second of this. So I, I rented it on iTunes. And I'd highly recommend it. It's really well done. But it was amazing the timing of as I'm reflecting on the readings and watching this movie unfold. But this movie is about Jackie Robinson, the first man of color to integrate professional baseball. And Chadwick Boseman plays Jackie Robinson. And Harrison Ford plays Branch Rickey, who is the part owner and manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers. And... What you get to know about Branch Rickey um, is that he is a man of faith. And really, uh, it unfolds as the movie uh, goes on, spoiler alert, but, uh, but he's a great man of faith. And he has this conviction to bring about integration in baseball. And you don't find out till later, but as a young player, he had a black friend on his team that he saw experience prejudice and not given a fair shake. Uh, in in the club, and it really rubbed him the wrong way, and something happened in his mind. You could tell in this character that, that, that as St. Paul was talking about, there's some kind of renewal and transformation that started to happen in his own mind, and he would tell Jackie later that he, he, he knew he had to do something, but he wasn't brave enough to do it then, but it, later in his life, he, the Lord gave him this, this position as an owner, and he had influence, and he couldn't avoid it any longer. And so as he sits down his staff at the Brooklyn Dodgers to tell him his plan that we're going to invite, we're going to try to find kind of just the right player from the Negro Baseball League and invite them in to play, you know, in the white uh, major leagues, everybody's common sense alarm is going off. They're saying, this is a horrible idea. Like, people are not ready for this. Um, But he is convicted. And so he presses forth. And as he gets in touch with Jackie Robinson, he brings him into his office and he tells him and he says, you know, he kind of starts to key him in on we are out to renew people's minds and it's going to be an uphill battle. There's going to be suffering involved. People are going to want to provoke you and want to see you fight back. And he says, but we have to slowly change their minds. And he said, first, the first thing we have to do is try to get everyone to believe two things, that you are a fine gentleman and that you are a great baseball player. Now, beyond that, obviously, the the big game is to be able to see each other as God sees us, (laughs) to be able to treat one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. But it's interesting to see Branch Rickey's character talking to Jackie Robinson, and he has this awareness that Christ has given him. And he even says, you know, as, as Jesus says, like, you're going to have to have the guts to uh, turn the other cheek at certain points. And that's going to cause, you know, a lot of suffering. And he kind of is testing Jackie and said, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this kind of suffering that might incur? And obviously, um, you know, Jackie Robinson accepts that challenge. And there's so many things to point out in this movie. But one kind of hit home with me, I guess, because of uh, the locale. But one of the players on the team is a guy named Bobby Bragan. And once Jackie makes it through the minor leagues and he gets to the Brooklyn Dodgers, there's a group of guys, particularly from the South, who sign this petition and say, 
you know, we're not going to play with a colored man. And uh, Branch Rickey snuffs that out and kind of moves them on. But one guy in particular, Bobby Bragan, who's from Birmingham, Alabama, goes back in to see Branch and just tells him, look, I can't do this. And he says, you know, my friends back in Birmingham will never forgive me for playing with a colored man. And so Branch said, well, you know, I hate to hear that. I'm sorry you're, you're, you're quitting, but uh, he said, I'll, I'll try and get you traded. And it's amazing to see this transformation in this uh, character, Bobby Bragan, who's a, you know, a real person from Birmingham. And when they go to play Philadelphia, they experience some of the harshest racism and the manager of the Phillies is heckling Jackie and just saying horrible things that that's hard to even watch. But as Bobby watches this unfold and he sees the resiliency of Jackie, he sees the self-control, he sees what he's willing to suffer to be able to advance this cause, he has a change of heart. And he goes back to Branch after after a couple of weeks of being around uh, Jackie and probably the first person in his life he ever, uh, you know, black person he ever had a friendship with and asked to not be traded. And you don't see this in the movie, but I, I researched a little more, and Bobby Bragan would go on to have a 73-year career in professional baseball between playing and managing. And he became known widely to have a reputation for his color blindedness in his management, that he was particularly willing to give a fair shake to people of different colors and ethnicities, and an amazing thing to see kind of in real time as you watch this movie and as I research the transform the transformation and renewal of somebody's mind as they get to see and experience the mind of Christ being lived out by somebody. There's one moment, uh, you know, Jackie was such a strong person and, and did not wear his emotions on his sleeve. But there's one point in Philadelphia where he is just getting heckled and heckled. And he takes a moment and goes into the kind of under the bleachers and just has a moment and hits the bat against the wall and breaks down really the one time in the movie. And uh, Branch, Harrison Ford, is playing him. He, he goes to him and he says, uh, Jackie, you are living the sermon. You're living the sermon, the sermon. And he says, Jackie, you are a medicine for people. We need you. You're a medicine. And I think what he's talking about is the life of Christ alive in him. The life of Christ living through him was the medicine that so many people on his team and in the country needed to see to start slowly renewing and transforming their mind so that they can discern the will of God what is good and pleasing and perfect. And as hard as it was, you could see the words of Jeremiah and uh, Jackie Robinson as the, as the movie unfolded. You know, you duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me and you triumphed. All the day I'm an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Many times when we step into that space of what God is asking us to do, it will not always just be comfortable and convenient. Many times we will take on the mocking, the laughter, the pushback of the world around us because the world around us many times is just relying on their own sensibilities. And so we're challenged to think in our own lives, where do our minds need to be further renewed? so that we can discern more the will of God and be more in touch with what is truly good and pleasing and perfect? What areas of our life are we perhaps too comfortable? What areas in our lives have become too convenient, perhaps to the point that our spiritual sensibilities have become dullened because we have settled for the common sense of this world? Today, the, Christ invites us to go beyond common sense to be willing to deny ourselves, take up our crosses and follow him, to be able to lose our lives for the sake of the gospel. And if we look around our world and as, and as our mind, as we start to see things more and more the way that Christ sees things, there'll be certain things like Branch Rickey 
that we will be compelled to address, whether it's issues of inequality, whether it's issues of race, whether it's issues of forgiveness needing to be extended. There's so many things that Christ might point out to us if we start to go beyond our common sensibilities. But let us not be afraid to do that because that is where we will find God for who our soul thirst. And that and that space is where God will be able to use us to help bring about the renewal of the minds of the world so that we can discern God's will together and help build his kingdom here on earth.